Hey everyone, it's Orange. I have another guild battle for you guys today. It's been such a long time. We're pretty high ranked this week, so we pulled two good guilds. I recorded two, so maybe I'll do two commentary deals. Today we're fighting Epic Fail Delta. Oh shit, it's Childish's guild. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to the first match and see what I picked. First thing to point out though, actually before we do that, is that we only have like seven, or I think we had nine swords left, so we obviously lost this one, but I'm gonna show you guys who I hit, so one second. Okay, here's the first one. I'm hitting that ant guy. He actually hit me during rush hour and he drew to my tank mummies and then I think he bruisered me and won, and, but it took him like three minutes or something. Whoa, throwing shade at Ant here. Okay, so for the first round, I'm hoping that Orion doesn't land his strip because my Veligil and Rena have will runes, but Ritesh doesn't, so I'm just hoping for the best there. And, you know, if Orion doesn't mess anything up, the first turn with Orion's gonna determine that whole match. Then for the second round, I'm going to copper it, but with Shasun. So I'm just going to kill everything on that team one by one with copper, starting with Ragdoll because he's the main threat, then Ritesh, then Artemil last. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, here we go. So the first turn's really going to determine this match, and nothing gets defense broken or stripped and defense broken. So I'm going to win from this point on. So I'm going to put up immunity and I'll pretty much have that permanently. I mean, there is a chance that I lose my buffs with violent procs like Ritesh or Veligil violent procs the immunity buff off and then Orion might get um, a defense break and I could lose. So right now, oh yeah, and he could just take it off like that and I could still lose. So right now I'm focusing down Sierra because she's the main threat in my opinion. She can really do a lot of damage to something, but the Perna would have to violent proc to do a lot of damage to stuff, so I'm just gonna focus her down, kill her, and then things get much safer at that point. And then afterwards I can kind of go for whatever I want, either Orion or Perna. So Sierra's dead, gonna give myself some heals with Rena. Rena and Ritesh's heals are enough. So now I'm going to hit the Perna and see how squishy it is. I'm also going to hit Orion to see how squishy he is to determine what I want to go for because my Veligul and Rena are going to have an easier time going for Perna, but Ritesh is the, my main damage dealer because his scalings are better. He actually does some damage. I pop Perna's passive there and Perna's going to res. Then I'm just going to start focusing Perna down with Ritesh because I've identified that that's my target because Perna's really squishy. And maybe I'll get some crits with Ritesh, you never know. Orion's still doing his thing, and he actually defense breaks Veljul right there, just like I was talking about earlier, but I kind of forgot, so I was messing up my thought process earlier. So yeah, that could have happened earlier and things could have been bad. But I eliminated Sierra really quickly, so that didn't happen. And then, like I said, um, if Sierra bombs me, it's like almost GG. But if um, Sierra's dead, and if that happens, Perna would have to violent proc multiple times to kill my monsters, because all of them are really tanky. And the Perna wasn't doing too much damage, so... Now Perna's dead and I'm just going to focus down Orion and that will be that round. So let's go ahead and skip to round two. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to focus everything down one by one with Copper, starting with Ragdoll because I think he's the main damage dealer here. I don't want to be getting defense broken by Ritesh and then have Ragdoll do a lot of stuff. So I figure he's the easiest one to kill too because I might not be able to kill Ritesh with Copper because... Ritesh's generally have a lot of HP, sometimes more than 50,000. I think right now my copper is doing 49-ish, 48,000 damage per hit. 
and that's all due to the Guild Wars buildings that I've been buying. I've been noticing a huge increase in my damage because I've been purchasing those, and I figure they're better than scrolls because I actually did the math with scrolls. I've talked about this before, I'm sorry if you've heard it, but uh, my next target's going to be Ratesh because I think he's easier to kill than Artemil, and Artemil might have a lot of defense too, so I just want to, you know, clean shot, one shot, whatever Copper's third skill's called, um, Ritesh to get him out of here to uh, not complicate things because he does have the defense break and he's kind of complicating things. So let's talk about the Guild War buildings versus scrolls. So I did all the math on how much guild points it costs to buy all of the Guild Wars buildings and then I figured out how many scrolls I could buy with those same exact points and then I did the math on those. I kind of did like scrolls per week too. I can't quite remember what it was, but either way, whatever math I did, it should be a really good ballpark answer. So I figured out how many scrolls I'd get, roughly, and then I figured out what my odds were for a nat 5. I kind of excluded nat 4s because I don't really know if I need too many anymore. I mean, skill ups would be okay for certain things. Orion would be good, a second Lucian would be good. There are some nat 4s that I could still use, but I was just really concerned with nat 5s. Um, so the odds for a nat 5, I believe, were around... I think 70%, maybe closer to 80% chance that I got one nat 5 from all those scrolls, or I could have every single Guild War building level 10. So I figure every single Guild War building level 10 is the better choice, because you may not even get a nat 5. If you get one, it could be a duplicate or it could be a bad nat 5. So I definitely... Um, still support my decision for buying the Guild Wars buildings, even though it takes like two years to fully buy, or maybe more than, or a little less than that. I just did the math based on like a farming guild, how many maximum points you could get per week, and I think it was like close to two, was it two years or one year? I don't remember, but all my Guild Wars buildings are like level five. So Artemil, we're stuck in a sticky situation right now. Um, he has enough defense to where my copper can't thunder strike him properly, as we see right there. So I'm wondering what I should do, and I checked Copper's second skill. He actually has a defense break, so my plan is to land the defense break on Artemil, save my Thunder Strike, and hopefully I can Thunder Strike in time where Artemil still has that defense break on him. So I do actually get that. I'm going to be autoing here for a little bit to get that, so let's go ahead and skip ahead to when that happens. Okay, it should be here quite soon. Let's see. Okay, so I land the defense break right there. I just stopped it from autoing. And then I'm not quite sure if I have my Thunder Strike up because I was autoing and I'm just hoping that it's up right now. So I boost myself and I do have Thunder Strike up so I'm able to finally kill Artemil. So that was the first match. Let's go ahead and skip to the second one. For the first round of this one, if Sierra does not have Will Runes and Orion, I'm most likely going to be um, lightning striking using my Lagmaron's third skill, but if they do have Will, I have a backup skill to use, which is Lagmaron's Squall. The only threat on the other team is Sierra, so I'm gonna kill her first. Um, what's his name? Elagriel's probably going to res her, but I should be able to kind of deal with her from then on with defense break or attack breaks. And then for the second round, I'm just going to be picking a standard bruiser team, betting that my runes are better than his and that I can get some decent RNG. I mean, RNG doesn't really come into the picture, but I'm just guessing that I have better runes. I'll probably move first, stomp on him, and then, you know, do a lot of damage to all of his monsters. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so since there's Will, I'm going to be squalling the Sierra. Like I said, she's the only threat, so we got to get her out of here because she's going to be killing my Galleon. I'm just going to hit the Orion there for kind of no reason. I didn't know what to do with my Galleon's violent proc. So I squall Sierra. She died. And... Now she gets rezzed, which is pretty normal, but, um, you know, Orion didn't stun Lagmaron. If he did, I'd have some issues, so now I can Lightning Strike, get an attack break on her. I think she already had it, though, 
and the Sierra was tanky as hell. I was like, what's up with this? Um, I knew since she was so tanky, she wouldn't do a lot of damage, so she didn't. My Galleon really doesn't have that much HP. I tried to build him as a tank Galleon, but I kind of didn't succeed very well because he got ruined up kind of late after all my other monsters did. You guys can check out my monthly rune video if you want to see what he has on. So now um, I'm like, oh, things are looking bad. I kill Sierra again, and then what am I going to do here? I'm going to go for Eladriel because he was rezzing her. So, yep, yeah, what's this? Um, we get some procs and stuff. Let's see, did I have Squall up? Oh no, the video, why is it lagging? Okay, let's see if I had Squall. Yeah, I think maybe if he didn't proc so much there, I would have been able to Squall the uh, Eladriel and kill him. I kind of forgot if he had um, defense break. Let's go back a second. Hold on. Okay, so we're back and we're re-watching this because I need to see what happened here. So Orion's moving again and boosting attack bar. Okay, so I land the defense break on her. And this is the second time I kill her because I squalled her. Okay, so here's where it's really important. Okay, so he heals... And I have Squall up right now. But this happened. I think I would have been able to kill him with Squall and I would have won. But yeah, so I feel like I feel like that one was kind of unlucky. But if you guys think differently, feel free to let me know down below. Let's go ahead and skip ahead to round two because at this point I just slowly lose. I can't do enough damage. He keeps rezzing and yeah. So let's skip to round two. Okay, like I said, this is just going to be pretty much a bruiser match. They don't have immunity, so I'm going to bring Veramos to stomp. And he did move before me, um, but I landed some good stomps on him. And I'm going to be focusing Theo down here first because he's the squishiest. I know that the Anubis' uh, shield's going to be coming in, so Theo's the easiest one for me to hit. The video's so laggy, I'm sorry. I should have tried to... Um, make sure that it wasn't going to be like this before I recorded. I've been having some issues with this. I reset my router modem and it fixed it. So I don't know what that has to do. I don't know why that fixed it. I did that a couple days ago. Okay, so Theomars is dead. They have no res or anything. I get pretty lucky here with um, something happened there where I got really lucky. Oh yeah, I landed the stun on the Ritesh. If I didn't, my Theo Mars would have been dead. So now I heal up Theo. So yeah, I got a really nice stun on Ritesh right there. And now I know that I have it in the bag. Even if I didn't... Oh wait, okay, hold on. If I didn't stun Ritesh, it could have been close and maybe I could have lost. Because it would have just been my Veramos and my Ritesh versus them. And it would have been pretty hard to burn through that shield with my Veramos and my Ritesh the Anubis' shield on the other Ritesh. So I win the second round, and that is a draw. Now let's go ahead and find the third and final match. For the first round, I'm going to be Lucianing it, and my first target is going to be the Ritesh, because I think he has the most threat against my team if he violent procs. The Rakan is only going to be focusing Lucian, so I can kind of afford to lose that. This fight is more of a fight of who can kill who first, and then Molong, he might do his, like, AO- like, not his AoE, sorry. He might do his single target, like, big skill where he takes away a lot of your HP on either one of my water monsters, but I think that should be fine. I feel like Molong's kind of like an isolated attack, but Ritesh, if he AoE defense breaks and procs, it's gonna be bad news. So I'm going to go for him first. Second round, I'm just going to bring a lot of tanky stuff with some will sets and pretty much hope for the best. Even if I get defense broken, I'm hoping that I can still live and end up killing them. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, so the Molong moves first, which is very strange. That Molong has to be super fast, which actually makes sense because I think how his skill works, he's just going to take away a certain amount of your HP and that's it. So like I said, Ritesh is my first target. I think I'm going to do the most damage with my uh, triple shot, whatever it's called, on Theo. And then I get a violent proc, so the Ritesh dies. I, was a I thought that the Molong might survive, which is fine. And... Um, 
So that whole thing happens. And then right here, what do I do? Let's see. Okay, so I strip him. And then I'm going to go for the Rakan because I think Megan should be able to survive them. And then the video lagged. Something happened. We're lagging terribly. It gets really close here. And he crits and I lose. So right there, I feel like I got unlucky. I think that I could have won that, but I think the odds were just not in my favor. So that was kind of disappointing. And then here, like I said, I'm just going to bring a lot of tanky stuff. And even if I get defense broken, hope that I can still survive with the majority of my monsters. I'm trying to see who's squishy here. I kind of mess up and don't focus anything down really well. So I'm dotting stuff up, and Ritesh dies, but I still think I can pull this out here because I have a lot of dots, and I still have a lot of CC with um, Veramos' stomp. So as we can see, I landed some CC, and right now I'm just trying to get dots out on everything, and try. I'm trying to play a little bit more smart compared to how I started this round out as. So I'm going to try to dot up Orion, and I'm pretty confident that I can still win. It might be kind of close, you know, especially if he get if he gets violent procs, I could lose. So, gonna stomp here and just get dots out. And now I know I've won. So that one was another draw, but I feel like I got unlucky for that first round. So, yeah, that was the Guild War. We lost because we didn't really have that many swords left at the end. But I'm glad that I could show you guys some good fights and explain my reasoning. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys later.